Welcome to Are You Still Using x -Rec? Hey, I'm Eric, and uh, this morning I got an email from uh, Michael. Uh, and Michael wrote a very nice email about x -Rec and how that it had saved a, a specific scenario where he was struggling to, to do something. And uh, thought, hey, x -Rec would make a great topic for, for a video because it's not a not something that a lot of people know about. And my first reaction was, but hang on, wait. Everybody knows about x ray It's one of the oldest constructs we have in, in AL. It has been with us since forever. Um, so I kind of said, no, 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 there's no reason for me to talk about x ray but then it kind of stayed in the back of my head say, well, maybe there is. And uh, and what actually got me thinking was, I, I was trying to f remember the last time I actually used x -Rec. And I could not remember it. Anyway, so before I get too deep into this, let me just explain what the concept of x -Rec is. So the concept is that when you get a record from the database, uh, by a get or by a, you, and, and this all started with rec, and, and th that's where it's interesting. So whenever the, the, the client gets rec, it saves a copy of how the record looked when it got it from the database. In the old native database, this was actually used to compare so when you did a modify, you would the system would compare what's in the database with the x -rec, and if that was changed in it, since it was retrieved from database, you will get the original message saying another user has changed the definition of this record since it was whatever. Uh, that message that has had a million different uh, ways of not being able to really tell people why it failed. Um, so x -Rec is very old. So the idea behind x -Rec is that it preserves a copy of the unmodified record. Um, and the, the simple use case is that you like on validate, you check to see that if they are trying to validate something that is different from what is already in the field, then do something or don't do something depend on on your use case um and and to prevent uh triggering logic that and on change logic that is not really on change and so on um but and and i have used this a lot um but it seems that we kind of abandoned it at, at least when I'm, I'm I look at at my style of coding when I look at 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 um, stuff that I'm involved in there's almost no usage of uh, x-ray and just for fun I I went to uh, to to github uh, looked at my repository for all the stuff that has been written about a uh, about YouTube videos, um, and I have not used a single uh, instance of X-Ray. Anyway, let, let's actually take a look at it for a second. The, this video is not supposed to be long, so uh, let's just take a look at, at X-Ray. So here is a table, simple table, three fields, nothing code, text, text, and, and there's a page, a list page, that just have the fields. Um, so the idea is let's use text one as an example and look at the unvalidate trigger. So we can see here that we do have x -rec. So it's there and it's typed the same as rec would be. Um, so so we, we, could, we could do a very simple thing here. We could start by saying that message x equal percent one new equal percent two and then we'll do x rec text one and rec text one so let's just see what's in there 
So I will compile, deploy, and let's see if uh, that was fast. Uh, so if we add a new record here, um, ABC, I type sub, wow, that was supposed to be something. Tap out, and we get X equal blank, and you equal type something. That's great. So let's try it again. Now we'll do something, we'll type else. And, and this is where this is where Business Central is slightly different from old NAV because now we're actually getting the previous value of the field because the, the save concept is kind of weird here compared to how it used to be. Uh, but that was the previous value, that's the new value. So, so now X is kind of, um, let's do that again. So something one, two, three, four, and we get this guy, but it might just be the message that is messing with us. Um, so that, that's the concept of X-Reg. X-Reg has a close related friend. Um, and we can add that in parentheses here. And that is called cur field number, mean the current field number. So if we run this again, And we, we can use the test one this time and do test one. And we see that X is blank, new is test one. And this has been triggered from field number two, which is kind of logical since we know we are invalidated on field number two. But we could be deeper in something. So there is a, the original triggering field. So before no, before is the wrong word. Um, at the beginning of the world of Business Central and Nav and Navision and Navigator, there were only one client. That was the, that was the client. There were no web services and, and stuff like that. So there was, there were only two ways a field could be validated. Um, in in this case, uh, or a trigger a field related trigger could be triggered that was either by the client or by like validate um, so that was kind of okay but then suddenly we got other um, other clients type and what actually happened for a lot of code was that it the code was written with the expectation that like on validate was always called from the UI. But in lots of cases, that's not not the case anymore. So quite often, uh, if you tend to use x -Rec, be aware that it has different functionality depending on how it's called and who's calling it. Uh, and actually, if we go and look, Microsoft has even been so nice to write a help page about this. And, and there's a bunch of different scenarios where x rack can either be empty together with curve field number is um, zero or that x rack is just the same as rec. Uh, and you see here, validate trigger call by external CI code that calls the validate function. Copy of rec before assignment in the validate trigger. So this is this is the the different from what I started by saying that it was a copy of the record, the unmodified record. Um, um, but here is is the copy of how it looked before the validate trigger. Um, but in order, so so I have found myself that I don't need X-Ray. Uh, I have seen a lot of places where it, it goes like, if GUI allowed, then we'll do X-Ray stuff because then we know we have X-Ray because it's from the client. Uh, but I rarely, rarely find, and, and statistics probably because I also looked in, in some of our big customer projects and we're not using X-Ray. Uh, 
that at least my style uh, we don't use it so I the, the the triggering of one shot business logic uh, from a validate field um, seems seems that, that that's not really something we do I do uh, um, so I would love to hear your guys uh, opinion on x ray is that something you use or are you are you like me that hey that was something I used 10 years ago uh, I haven't touched it for forever or yeah let me know because uh, I'm kind of a I, you know I got the mail for very very nice mail from Michael thanks for sending it and uh, and I was thinking oh x ray but what's interesting about x ray but I think the interesting part about x ray is whether is the fact that I have stopped using it uh, and I, I can remember several cases where with the example with the GUI allowed where you know, suddenly something was called from somewhere and somewhere else, and 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 there was crazy test for X-ray that relied on this only being triggered from the UI. So the the code was not very uh, resilient. Uh, the code was not very portable, um, and not even in in the modern world to talk about tests and all that good stuff. Um, but yeah. Let me know what you think about x uh, And uh, until next time, have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and I'll see you soon.